uh, I think the biggest change is really uh, very obvious, and that is the, uh, the increasing uh, tendency to reach outside the organization to find the uh, basis of innovation and the components of innovation. Uh, and of course, that goes on in, in, a, in a variety of ways, with alliances and uh, acquisitions and uh, uh, just networking in general and so forth. Uh, I was thinking about that question, and I, I remembered an episode from the early 1960s when my friend uh, Nelson uh, uh, put together a conference, uh, conference and a book uh, on the rate and direction of inventive activity. And uh, there was a chapter in there about how a lot of uh, DuPont's uh, celebrated uh, innovations were actually uh, the result of acquisitions that they had made of uh, small companies. And um, the idea of publishing that chapter in the book actually, uh, actually uh, generated some resistance from DuPont, which considered it to be an insult. Because in that uh, day and age, the thing that you celebrated was your own lab and the great scientists that you uh, had in that lab, which is a innovative practice that DuPont had pioneered. Uh, and the idea that a lot of the good stuff was being uh, acquired from, from small companies uh, was not uh, taken for granted. Uh, and today I think it is uh, pretty much entirely taken for granted that a lot of the things that big companies do is not just generate stuff internally but to, uh, uh, but to uh, find things any place and make it work in the marketplace. And, and that is really a big change. Uh, I, think, I think there's one basic rule, and that is it's a bad idea to kill create creativity. Uh, if you're trying to innovate, you really have to go some distance to, uh, uh, to try to make room for better ideas. And uh, although that's pretty obvious, the fact is that so much uh, organizational practice uh, tends in the op opposite direction, so that even, even in small companies, uh, where it might be uh, more natural to uh, have a freer reign, uh, it seems like uh, over a short period of time, uh, some of the characteristic types of uh, organizational rigidities uh, uh, kick in and the hierarchical structures get more and more uh, firmly established. And uh, you create uh, internal environments which are uh, actually hostile to creativity and innovation. So that, that is a big mistake, and uh, some of the, what we've talked about this morning is, um, you know, is basically some rules or ideas for avoiding that big mistake. And when you get past that very general point, I'm not sure there is much that really uh, unifies the entrepreneurial startup and the big corporation, uh, 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 especially if the big corporation is uh, itself doing big things. Now, we can have uh, big corporations doing lots and lots of small things, and then, then there may be more resemblance between, uh, between the individual pieces in, inside the uh, big corporation and, and, and the small startup, and that can be, of course, organized deliberately. But if we're talking about uh, large, large corporations that do big things, uh, things as big as, as cars and computers and uh, aircraft and, uh, and uh, large-scale telecommunication systems and things like that, uh, I think it's very hard to run innovation in those settings in a way that is uh, very similar to the way that you do it in an entrepreneurial startup. I think the thing that we need, you know, most obviously, and is so well known to be a scandal, is that we, uh, we do a terrible job at elementary and secondary education overall. We rank very low in the global standards uh, on, on that uh, dimension, and probably that is a... Uh, that is a crippling effect on us in the long run. Fortunately, we do much better in uh, advanced education. So uh, in that area, we an export, have an export industry and, uh, and are something of a world leader. Uh, but um, another really major heading, I think, is the patent system. And my, my opinion is that the existing patent system is, uh, is uh, really terribly designed uh, from the point of view of of our needs, and there's a lot of sentiment out there uh, which uh, concurs uh, with my view on that. Um, and basically, we have a system that is uh, far, far uh, too ready to grant exclusive rate rights uh, uh, in, in the form of patents to ideas that uh, uh, are at best very marginal uh, 
uh, improvements on things that already exist and in some cases are basically really things from the public domain that somebody has packaged uh, and, uh, and sent off to the patent office. So there's, there's a substantial, uh, substantial movement afoot to try to uh, talk about reforming uh, the system. We basically need a system that uh, issues many fewer, much better uh, patents. You know, uh, we need to trade, you know, move on the quantity quality trade-off uh, in a kind of a dramatic way. And the uh, the uh, key to that, you know, is, is I just suggested is to have take very seriously the novelty test. You know, you have to have you know, some really substantial novelty uh, to really deserve the monopoly right that, uh, that uh, the patent represents. And one of the reasons for that, which people seem to, uh, to neglect when they talk about the virtues of patents, is the fact that uh, if, you, if you don't do that, you are, you are really denying uh, uh, p to people uh, the fruits of their own innovative labors because, uh, you know, the patent system says that if you have an idea and patent it, uh, it means uh, that I can't do it without your permission. I can't to practice that patent uh, without your permission, even if I thought of everything uh, involved myself. Uh, so the second, third, fourth, fifth, and 73rd inventor of the same thing uh, have their uh, labor go completely unrewarded while we award a monopoly right to the guy who got it through the patent office first. Um, and the, the worse the novelty test, the more serious that problem is, obviously, because getting 73 people to do the same obvious thing is not improbable. So you need a, a, really, a really strong novelty test to have a reasonable uh, basis for the patent system, and uh, at the moment we just don't have that.